Right, so what I'm looking at now is um, transactions. Um, when I started experimenting with materializing um, the Ethereum blockchain data into um, you know, an actual implementation of triples for the Ethon ontology, um, I was fortunate enough to have this one particular um, model that had a close one-to-one -one relationship with the data um, source from the ETL um, and, and, and you know the attributes and the concepts. So this, this was straightforward. But now what I'm doing is I'm going from this crude start um, with creating triples that represent blocks. So this was my mapping file. As I said, as I would have said previously, I'm just using handlebars, um, the JavaScript, JavaScript framework for um, templating. So this represents one record um, mapping. And uh, I have the Ethon ontology being applied. And then I am seeking the field from the data source and placing it um, you know, again, inside triples uh, representing the ontology. So I need to do the same thing for transactions, okay? So in other words, I need to create some kind of transactions map. So I thought it'd be interesting um, to show you the experience really. So where am I at? So I've created this transactions.map um, file. So this is really the template, the handlebars template. And I've had a look at the um, ETL, the transactions output. So, um, you know, this data doesn't really mean anything to us. It's just a series of columns, of course, but this is the header. So the header for the columns are we get, we're getting a transaction hash, nonce, uh, a block hash, a block number, an index, the from account, the to account, the value, uh, any gas and the gas price um, and an input. So I'm not sure what that input is at the moment, but these are the column headings from the ETL input file. So I transcribed those um, into here and put the handlebars um, pre and post declarations in there. But then I have to hunt out, well, how do I relate this to a model? Okay, so um, the subject here, the model concept that's in my mind is just transaction. So when I started with block, it was pretty clear immediately we get shown a model that shows a block. So it was quick, pretty quick thing for me to attempt to define a block and identify the attributes that that block should have. Now transactions um, is proving more difficult because um, we have the block modeling scheme uh, we have um, something describing the message, the transaction receipt and the log concepts. I can see there is a concept of a transaction here. Um, this is a repeat of the block model. Um, this is transaction receipts. So I can pick out we've got um, some attributes of transactions again here. Um, there's a contract message concept. Again, I'll look through here and I'm not really seeing anything that relevant to a transaction at that point. Um, the log concept, I can see a transaction here with a predicate and another object. Um, state transition, we can see there's a transaction here. 
okay and then we have transaction modeling scheme okay so this is rather brief um, and really it's showing some kind of state transition rather than oh sorry my apologies so this does clearly say transition modeling what I'm talking about so um, that's irrelevant to us at the moment network concept and modeling scheme so again that's um, sort of an abstract architectural uh, um, model and that's it so what I'm saying is it was quite easy to discover this model discover the block data and start to materialize an ethon ontology um, but when you come to look at transactions it is harder so you have to start then picking out parts of other models so for example uh, if we look here um, with the block we're possibly trying to find the um, point at which the block um, has a relationship to a transaction so here we go we've got transaction so this is possibly where I would start I'm looking for a block uh, and um, a transaction and then seeing if I can materialize this triple here so block contains transaction transaction okay and and then there's a property transaction index um, which is of type integer so what I'm going to do is go through and see if I can pluck out a number of triples um, that correspond or require or consume <laughs> whatever the right term is um, the attributes that we are getting from the ETL for transactions now so this is what I believe is an important uh, benefit of looking at ontologies or using ontologies such as Ethon. Um, so as I was just saying, um, excuse me while I find out where, <laughs> where I was. Um, as I was just saying, um, when I started looking at the data available from the ETL export um, with regard to blocks, I quickly found um, you know, this uh, model of a block. But when you start to actually get into the detail, um, you find, for example, that there isn't a clear entry point into transactions. And transactions is what um, I'm looking to model so you can um, go and have a look at um, some of these things aren't resolving so they're confusing me um, but we can go and have a look at plenty of diagrams like I was previously so um, and I, I hunt through these diagrams and um, you know lots of people will say diagrams are useful and and they kind of are but often each diagram has its own context and um, you're overloaded and also polarized by these concepts and a particular view um, of the model so as i had gone through here i had seen transaction as i've just said okay um, but i started to realize uh, i needed a, a different way of comprehending uh, what was available to me so um, i'm very rusty on my semantics it's been a few years since i was involved with that but um, i realized hold on let's go back and start looking at the model itself so um, the Ethon model itself is expressed in exactly the same um, data technique as uh, you would use for querying the actual data itself. So um, uh, the first thing I wanted to be able to ask 
is well, what are all the types of things or classes of things that exist? Because a block um, could be considered sort of a primary class and a transaction would be as well. So um, that the first question I wanted to ask of the model without looking at the diagrams, I wanted to actually query it and get some data back is well, what classes exist? So um, I've copied the uh, Ethon turtle uh, file. So this is the Ethon model um, expressed in turtle. And of course, I'm actually trying to materialize this model with real data, which is also expressed in the same way. So I can use exactly the same kinds of query techniques. So again, I'm a bit rusty on it. So I end up with my basic hello world um, plus query. Um, so the first sort of query people uh, 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 find out once they want to do something properly with um, RTF is just to be able to list all the types of things that exist. Uh, and this is literally the crudest way of querying types. There are much more specific models, in particular OWL, um, which gets a little bit uh, more expressive. Uh, these prefixes um, I've actually cut and paste, pasted from the prefixes that are expressed in the model, um, and they have to be slightly expressed differently at the top of a query. But I've cut and pasted them so that I've got exactly the same um, uh, prefixes uh, and I'm just using one what's called a predicate or one um, concept which is to list the types of things so this query is looking at every uh, subject looking at um, uh, using a predicate of RDF colon type um, and matching it with objects so I can run that query I've already done it before, of course. So um, using Jenna's ARQ. So I'm passing in the data and then I'm telling it to run this query. So when I do that, I get the first opportunity to start comprehending what this uh, Ethereum blockchain platform is all about expressed as a model okay so let's go to the top oops so this is what it's produced the columns are s and o uh, corresponding to those two placeholders in the query so first thing that i'm seeing is that it's actually got some example instance data in here um, I can immediately recognize that these are trying to be examples of instances, um, which is interesting, uh, defined as a, what they call a URI. And uh, this is of type block. So that's a number of blocks that are in the model data, um, which are possibly used in their test scripts, etc. So um, then we find we've got a concept called an OWL functional property. So um, block header is a, is a property. Um, so this here, if you were actually looking at this being defined in the model, you would actually see um, a subject, a predicate of that type, and then the object. Okay. So, um, but anyway, that's a little bit detailed for us at the moment. All I'm interested in is the higher level concepts so i'm looking for classes here we go so here's an owl class and we can now start to see the names of these uh, classes and start to realize there's a direct relationship between concepts we're seeing in the diagrams and understand about ethereum um, and how they're expressed in the model so these are classes so you can see we've got a block a contract account, um, self-destruct contract message, etc. So I'm looking for transaction. So I'm looking for all the things down here. 
Now, rather than, you know, um, just keep looking at this long list, let's immediately be, become more expressive and uh, tailor our query. And that might help you understand as well how this stuff works. So now I'm only interested in things that are, that are of a type, our class. Okay, in fact, I've done that slightly wrong, apologies. So I want to, I believe that I can do that. So I'm saying, find me all the subjects that are a type of our class. So let's run the query, see if that works. And it did. Okay, so now I'm just being told um, these high level model concepts that are defined as an owl class. So again, we can see the block. Um, so what I'm looking for is to see if there is an actual class known as a transaction. And interestingly enough, um, there isn't. Unless it's, unless it's this, TX. Yep, so I don't I don't see anything else. Now that, that's immediately interesting, right? Because transactions are um, probably more commonly discussed than a block. Or maybe not. Maybe when you get when you get into the development side, certainly. Um, so the fact that there isn't a transaction that is explicitly defined is quite interesting. So I now have to investigate that until I get to the point where I'm starting to comprehend the model and that will help me in defining uh, the mapping and using these ETL um, attributes that are available to me to materialize um, a set of triples that we can query. Um, the ultimate objective, by the way, is that once you start to get all of this data, the relationships between the concepts in the data um, become comprehensible and you can actually traverse them. So that's really the objective of um, this little project, uh, is to get Sparkle queries that let us join new data to the blockchain and have it um, more expressive and more comprehensible. Okay, so I'll go away and think about that a bit and come back in a second. So what I can do is um, take that particular class that which obviously represents a transaction and um, what's cool about using Sparkle like this, you, you can then change your query, make the uh, concept transaction itself the subject of a query. And then I'm asking, um, tell me all the predi predicates that exist and um, the objects um, that uh, resolve to that predicate. Okay, so I'm now just slowly drilling down into the concepts. Um, right, so uh, that's a, a query I can run. So I'll run it against the model and um, I find out the following. So um, it's got a concept term status unstable. That just must be because obviously the model's in development. It has a comment um, to describe what this particular class, model class is. So transactions are messages between two accounts that may transfer ether and may contain a payload. Transactions always originate from an external account that is controlled by an external actor by means of a private key. The execution of a transaction creates a transaction receipt. Um, it's a subclass of message. So from a modeling point of view, that's probably a whole topic to discuss. Um, it's interesting, why do uh, people believe that transactions are subclasses of messages. Um, from my experience, I might not have thought that was the case. I might, might have thought they were they were they were they were uh, uh, independently modelable. Um, 
but in this case, a transaction is models, model, modeled as a subclass of message. Uh, it's also a subclass of something that I recognize as a blank node. So we don't know what that is. That's a bit anonymous. I don't know why it's there. Um, we've got the general type. It's an owl class. So we're familiar with that because we've just used that, those concepts. And then we've got a label, which now gives us that fully quite sort of uh, canonical term, that transaction. Okay. Um, okay, good. So um, we haven't learned that much. What I would like to find out is what things um, have predicates to objects that are, that are of type transaction so that I can, I can start to see uh, the relationships to other parts of the model in a query. Uh, so I'll go away and I'll try that. Okay, so what I want to know is um, what things and what kind of relationship uh, relationships exist to this class known as a TX or a transaction. So that's what this query is doing for me. Um, so this is, uh, I ran it and um, this is what I'm seeing. So again, th these are queries against the model. So it can be a little bit confusing, but the subjects that have been reported are actually properties that can be used. Okay. And the, um, oh, sorry, I got P there. So that confuses you if you say, oh, no, that's okay. Predicate. I'm sorry. So, um, the, this here, I, I just happen to know is a property, right? And the predicate that's being used here is, um, an RDF model mechanism to say that whenever any um, subject has a property of cumulative gas used, the, there's a constraint on the object that can be used with that assignment in that it must be a transaction. So, um, so the domain of cumulative gas used is a transaction. Whenever that property is used for a purpose, it expects it to be used in the domain of transactions. Okay. So all of these are properties that I know um, are tied to transactions. So create post TX state, TX status, um, TX V, I'm not sure what that is, message call depth, transaction logs bloom, transaction gas used, has log entry, log index, etc. Um, there's also uh, some subclass of um, and uh, range uh, uh, type properties, which are, you know, I won't bother going into. I'm just trying to show how incrementally you can learn more about this model from a programmatic point of view rather than looking at um, diagrams, etc. So we're, we're actually querying the model itself and we're able to infer certain uh, concepts. So I'm going to think about another query, just one last one for this session, another query um, that might help me discover uh, a relationship to the transaction, probably from a block or for, for, from some transitive model concept between a block and a transaction um, so that it, it will give me the ability to find my very first uh, mapping triple that I can declare in this uh, mapping template. After a bit of hacking about, um, as I said, I'm very rusty on my semantic web stuff. Um, but um, what I managed to do, I have a query now that's helping me 
isolate where to start with creating a mapping for transactions. Okay, so um, what I've done is I've constructed a query that's uh, really building on what I discovered uh, before. So I think if I um, just run this query that I'd been running before, I'd been saying that um, we had found that for a class of transaction, we were getting the following uh, subjects and predicates that had um, the class transaction as an object. And this was starting to show us modeling information um, such as uh, uh, attributes, things that can be used as predicates in queries, um, defined as having a domain of transaction. Now, um, a while ago, I think I might have not been clear. So I just restate that these are attributes that are of the domain transaction. So effectively, they are attributes of a transaction. So for example, cumulative gas used, um, you know, the transaction status, etc. So that makes sense. Right, so um, they're, they're attributes that you would find on a transaction, but we're looking for the ones that uh, help us find a relationship with another class, hopefully a block. So this is where we can look at this um, uh, attribute, which contains transaction, which is contains transaction. And this is reporting that um, the RDFS range, which is the opposite of the domain. So, so um, this is where a particular attribute on another class or type uh, expects to have a transaction class in its range. Okay, so um, that would be something like a thing contains transaction and then uh, an object of transaction type. Okay, and we've got another range in here, has originator transaction. So it's this range property here um, that can help us um, find a relationship. Now, if we take those two uh, attributes that have a range of transaction class, and then we start thinking about how to query that. Um, right, so what I'm doing here is I'm searching for all the subjects that have a range of transaction, which should pick up these two attributes we saw in the previous query. But then what I'm doing, I'm saying um, for all of the attributes that have a range of transaction, um, let me know what domain uh, they belong to. So that's learning that the use of domain should help us um, find the class that the, the, that attribute will be used on. Okay, so um, if I run that query. So what we've had reported back is that the subject is um, the the uh, attributes. So um, we can see the two that we'd already found in here with the range. But this time what we're doing is moving on to say, well, for those attributes, tell us the domain that they belong to. So we've now, we're now able to recognize that we have the class block. So the main property that relates block to a transaction is contains transaction, which probably we can see in one of the diagrams. Uh, yep, contains transaction. So we've now using Sparkle to query the Ethon 
ontology itself, uh, the, the model, we've been able to confirm that the model has uh, a relationship between a class of type block and a class of type transaction, and it contains transaction. Okay, so um, at that point there, I can have a quick look at the map and see if there is something that can help me form this particular triple. So that's to actually materialize the triple into an instance of the model. Now um, I'm going, well, yeah, okay, here's a transaction block number, right? So if we consider that the unique identifier um, for a block, in fact, I actually look at the um, uh, the map for for blocks, which is here. So um, I had actually created a unique identifier for block like this, right? So I can I can actually take this. Um, go into the transaction map here. Uh, the stuff that I've put here are, ju are just placeholders to, to, so that I can identify what kind of things um, I want to um, uh, get from the ETL data and place into the record that I'm creating with handlebars. So um, let's paste that in. So we can now say that um, we have this as a, a subject that we can construct, okay? Um, and rather than block number, it's going to have to be this name. So transaction block number, uh, I believe, will be equivalent to that. Okay, so by putting transaction block number there, we can reconstruct a URI for the block that this transaction is going to belong to. And we know now that a block will want to have a attribute of contains X and, um, and it will want to refer to a URI of the transaction. And this is where we have to make this up so we have to make, this is something I'm going to have to talk about later, but we now, we need to create URIs and decide how they're constructed. So um, there's this prefix concept here that I've been using. So if I actually have a look on the readme, uh, I believe, actually, uh, no, I think we can take a peek into headers, um, which I've put in here somewhere. Of course, as I'm recognizing different requirements, I'm, um, yeah, here you go. So this is um, uh, where I'm starting to define headers. Uh, whether these prefix values are appropriate or not, I don't know yet. We'll change them as I learn more. Um, but I'm looking for something that would we could use for prefixing and creating a URI um, sort of parent uh, reference for a transaction. So I can see we've got IBTX here, um, which is saying block transaction root, but I'm not sure that block transaction root is exactly what we want. I think that's some attribute that I saw on the model. So when we go here, um, somewhere here there was, um, I don't know where I saw it, but there's a block tran transaction root on here, I'm sure, somewhere. Okay, I can't, I can't see it at the moment. All right, so maybe it was somewhere else. But anyway, there's a block transaction root and I can't find it. So... But for now, I'm just going to create you know, a prefix that I can use. 
I don't know why I've chosen IB. <laughs> oh, Intuition Blockchain? No. no. No, I don't know why I've chosen that. So I'll just call it TX. Okay. Um, we use the same sort of initial um, prefix, mainnet, and I'll just say here transaction, TX. How's that? TX. So um, I can now, in my mapping template, that I'm creating, use prefix TX, TX, right? So then um, we need to find the, the transaction identifier. And if I'm picking a true identifier, I presume the only one is potentially this hash. Okay. So that is a line that will um, receive a transaction block number from each record of the ETL file for transactions. Uh, and it will receive the transaction hash and it will just replace these placeholders with the value of those variables and uh, give us uh, a, a, a triple, right? Um, so, okay, so the journey I was trying to show is when we get a model, in this case for the block, this was quite easy for us to, to start. But then when we look for the next class of object in this model, which is transaction, it quickly becomes slightly harder to find um, the model. So we used a few techniques to query the Ethon ontology itself, and start to understand um, uh, the classes of things, the properties that things can have, okay, now the re how they relate to each other. Um, we discovered that we've got a couple of attributes um, that uh, uh, refer to block and contract mes message. Block is the one that we're seeking at the moment because we already have a mapping for that. And we have this attribute contains X. So on that basis, we were then able to put our first mapping uh, declaration in the transactions.map file um, to construct a triple. And we made a few sort of crude and creative uh, um, decisions in constructing this first triple. So what I would be doing now is just going on and um, similarly exploring the model, finding um, relationships with other classes and trying to construct things. Um, just before I sign off, uh, I'll just show you now how quickly we, we, we start to actually create the other triple. So uh, now we've got what we could consider a unique identifier. This would become the subject for things. We can then look um, at the other attributes that are in the domain of transaction and just see if we can find the first one that corresponds to some of the ETL data that we're getting. So let's see if we can find one. Um, transaction index is, ah, oh, there you go, transaction index. So if we take transaction index from the model and we say, um, this particular transaction has a transaction index and we just put it there. Now there is the concept of typing and stuff like that. Um, I don't know what type this transaction index would be. Again, I could refer to the model and I have noticed that the, the actual values in some of the ETL input um, are not uh, uh, suitable for the kinds of data types that um, have been defined in the model. So uh, hex binary, I think, is the one that's cropping up all the time. So all I'm doing here is I'm just putting something in here to give us some closure so I can shut up and, uh, and let you guys go. So I'm just guessing that this is likely to be uh, hex binary. So I'll just put hex binary there. 
Okay, so I'm gonna finish on that. So we've identified a relationship between a block and a, a transaction and constructed a triple to represent it, re represent it, which gives us a unique identifier for the, the transaction on this record. And then we've actually used that unique identifier to introduce a property and uh, declare uh, which ETL value should be used for that property. That's it. I think I'm done for today.